All right. One of the students here had a couple questions before we begin, so let's start with that. The question is about alt attributes on images. And first of all, we want to use them, so every image that you have should have an alt attribute on it. Uh, the alt attribute, to remind you, is to give people that are visually impaired an idea of what the image is. So it's important uh, to do that because otherwise um, they would lose sense of what information was attempted to be conveyed via um, the image. And the question, uh, the, the second part of the question related to whether you can have two alt attributes or not. And the answer is no. There's only one alt, alt attribute. Why, why would you want to have two alt attributes? Okay. 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 I use the uh, photo bucket site, mm -hmm. the primary source of the file for the image. I would like to use the for the photo bucket wasn't available. Oh. Uh, the question was, is, is could you do something like if you, if you use a photo service like, um, like PhotoBucket, uh, if you created your image with an SRC equals you know, HTTP PhotoBucket.com slash something or other, could you put an alternative path, like if there, was just, if there happened to be a problem with PhotoBucket on that day, to, to pull it off of, of your site? And the answer is no. Um, no, you could not. Um, th that is, that's different than the alt text. The, the, the alt attribute is for alternative text. So what you could, what would happen is if PhotoBucket wasn't available, then the alt text would display. So you would you'd want to make that meaningful so that would be your substitute. There's no way to sort of substitute another image for uh, the first one if, it, if it's down. And that would have been my next question. Right, right, yes. Uh, that would depend on the browser, by the way. Would it be possible by, by positioning two images so that they overlap and if one is on top of the other, if one image didn't display, you see the upper part of it by positioning it? Yeah, you could do that then, but uh, the question was could you just display two images then and, and, and position them to be on top of each other? Um, if you're going to go to all the trouble of doing that, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't need the photo bucket service. You just, you just use the images off your own server. Because you'd always be downloading the image anyhow. Yeah, it's, it's say it, it would work. It would get around the issue, but it, it would be uh, if if that were the case, you would just use your server for that uh, to show the images. All right. Um, today we are going to. Uh, was were there other questions or, or no? I think that counts. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. One question. All right. If I Uh -huh. uh, for homework purposes. Oh, for homework, yeah. Can I do that if I had a, a self-serving reason to do that? Uh, the question is, if you had a photo bucket account, could you use that on your homework as opposed to uploading images? And for a photo bucket account, yes, because they let you do that. That's the whole reason for that. What I don't like folks to do is, is do what's called hot linking, where you would have an image and have the source and just be some website that isn't necessarily a photo imaging site, like if you were to pull a, a photo off of CNN's page or something like that. You're that essentially yeah, essentially you're stealing their bandwidth, uh, e even though it would be you know, a small amount in, in our cases. But PhotoBucket and, and other uh, services are designed to do that. So it's okay to do that because that's the, they intend. They probably even give you the code to do that. You know, if if you go to their site, uh, they do that. So yeah, you could use Photo Bucket uh, for the images on those. All right, positioning. Um, we've we've gone over um, two sort of styles of positioning. Uh, one is where everything is very rigidly um, laid down. A second is where there's some flexibility to it. 
And now we're going to go to the most flexible of all. They're sometimes called liquid layouts or sometimes called responsive layouts. And I'm going to start with an example just meant to illustrate the, the technique that we're going to go over. Um, and, and we'll build upon that example all right, uh, to, to actually do a real page. The, the, the thing that we're going to cover deals with using the float attribute in CSS. And the float attribute is one of those that I could sort of give you an idea of what it's going to do, but it'll make much more sense when you see it. So let me give you sort of an overview just to start, a quick one, but know that, that some of this will become a lot clearer when we actually see it in action. Floating works like this. Floating works like this. This is the entire web page. All right? And let's say right now at this point it's expanded to be rough, you know, a thousand pixels. In other words, we're pretty much on full screen. I can have my first element here, and let's say it is 600 pixels wide. And I float it to the left that will push it as far over to the left as it can. If I have another element then, let's say, that is 400 pixels wide. Let's, let's draw that a little bigger so it's in proportion. So that's 600. So if I had another one that is, let's say, 300 pixels wide, and I floated to the left, it would put it alongside of the 600 pixels because it can shove it in towards the left and there's enough space to fit both of them in on the same line. Because the, to the entire width of the screen is 1,000 pixels. So, when you float something, you push it towards the left, and one of two things is going to be true. Either there's going to be sufficient space for it, in which case it's fine, it will put it alongside of the element to the left, or there isn't sufficient space to it, in which case it will drop it down below. So what's going to happen when I resize this screen is as I gradually make it narrower and narrower, if I were to resize it to be 800 pixels, the screen, there's no longer enough room to put the 300 pixels alongside of this. So at 800 pixels, this will drop down below and be underneath it. Now that sounds... It's better than how it sounds. It sounds confusing, but this allows the page to sort of conform this allows the content, rather, to sort of conform to the size of the page. So actually, it's a good thing. It's a good first step in taking a website that you've developed for uh, a desktop and have it work in a mobile environment, too. Because in a mobile environment, you're going to have a much, much narrower. And then what maybe used to be two columns in a desktop will be one column in a mobile environment. So. Let's go and let's, let's just make a, a dummy web page that just has two blocks just like this and we'll play around with it and we'll actually see it in action. So I'll go in. And in this example, I'm going to keep everything in the one file. I'm not going to use an external CSS file, simply because this is just a, a dummy example. We're not, we're not, this isn't really part of the site that we're doing, the template that we're doing, and so on. So I'll just conclude everything in the one page. So let me put in my typical tags.
And in this case, I'm going to use two divs. But keep in mind, it doesn't have to be div. It can be any HTML element that we use. I'm going to give a div an ID of div1. And the second div, I'll give an ID of div2. So don't think that it has to be divs and you have to use IDs or anything like that. We can, we can use any of the other, any of the elements. Any of the ways that we've used to select things for our CSS, we can use here as well. So let me go in and put my style in. And I'm going to say div1. I'm going to give it a height of 300 pixels, a width of 600 pixels, a background color of green, and whoops. I'm going to float to the left. Get rid of the margin. Pardon me? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, okay, thank you. All right, there we go. Let's go and let's save this as. That would be whatever the web, the web uh, browser's default is. So I, I think there is actually a small margin um, in there. <coughs> All right. So now let's go and view this. They're both floating left, right. Correct. So, just as I described, there's actually a little margin here on the body. We can take rid of, we can get rid of that altogether by doing this. I can put a wild card and say margin zero. That way, by default, everything on the page has, including the body, has a margin of zero. So there, it's pushed up into the upper left corner. So if you notice, the green has a width of 600. It's floated to the left. We're in full screen now, so our width of our screen is, I don't know, uh, a thousand something. We can look and find out. 1,024. So our screen's 1,024 um, wide. So 600, 300, and then... 124. All right. Now, notice as we make this smaller, at a certain point, all right, we're at 1,024 here, let's say. We make it narrower and narrower. Maybe there we're at 950. We make it narrower. When we hit that border, there's no longer going to be 300 pixels available for it to put it on the same line. So, boom, it drops down below. 
All right. And again, it, it, it's sort of hard to see in this case, but in the case of where you have a multi-column page, where you had two blocks of text, um, it might be two blocks of text on a, uh, on a um, um, wide monitor. It might be one block in a, uh, in a uh, uh, smaller monitor. L let's do that, in fact. Let's say, let's grab some Greek text. Grab this paragraph, just have some dummy text. I'm going to put in my HTML. We're going to get rid of the colors so that we can actually read it. I'm going to give a little bit of a margin. margin right, 10 pixels, and I'm going to give a width instead of 50%, actually I'll keep it, I'll keep it as it was. And there we are at the wider screen resolution. It can fit both paragraphs in. As we go in and boom, make it small, we get them stacked on top of each other. Because I hard-coded the height in. That's an actual good question that I discovered about one-tenth of a second before you asked that question, because I was asking myself the same thing. Like, why is there a gap between them? There shouldn't be. But I put in, I had hard-coded a height of 300 pixels. So if I get rid of that, then these will be on top of each other in one column. So let's play around with this. Let's go in, and let's say, instead of 600 pixels and 300 pixels, let's make these... 50%, or let's do, let's do 40, per, let's do 50% to start, and 50%. And we might be surprised at the results, right? You might say to yourself, well, there's always 100%, right? So if one's 50% and the other's 50%, they'll always be able to fit side by side. You might think that. But wrong. As you notice here, they're stacked on top of each other, no matter what the screen resolution is. They never are side by side. Why is that? Mm, close, but not exactly. Because of the margin that I put in. I put in a 10 pixel margin. So 50% plus 50% plus 10 pixels, all right? If I use up 50% plus 10 pixels, there isn't 50% left. So what I could do is I could do something like this, a width of, let's say, 49, or let's do, let's do a width of 40%, 40%, and then a margin of 10 pixels. Then they fit side by side. And as it gets narrower, it fits side by side until it gets like that. Now one thing it won't do is it won't split words. So if I had like a really long word in there, it wouldn't take it down. It would, it would display the whole word. Now, that's kind of extreme, you know, and you're, you know, you're not going to even have a phone probably that's that narrow. 
So what you can do is you can actually put in a minimum width as well. So I could say min width 200 pixels. And I can do that for each of these. And it'll look the same until I get at a certain part, and then it won't make it any smaller than 200, and then it will go and pop it down below. So through a combination of things, we can make it look like it's two column on a wider screen and one column on a narrower phone, which is actually kind of what we want to do, if you think about it, right? Because a, a, a website, if you've done any uh, web browsing on a, uh, a mobile device, um, it's very hard to read two columns side by side. On a widescreen, two columns is good, right? In other words, if the text goes all the way across, it's actually a little harder to read, right? Because your eye tends to slide up or slide down, and you might get confused about that. So that's, you know, that's why newspapers, magazines, they have columns in them typically. typically. They don't have it go really wide, and websites do that too. So having multiple columns is good if you're talking about a wide screen, but it's not so good if you're talking about a narrow screen. So this effectively is the best of both worlds. This gives, allows us to, to give uh, two columns uh, when the screen is sufficiently wide, and when we get to a certain point then, presumably because we're on a mobile device, but, I mean, it applies if someone makes their browser window really narrow too, all right, then it changes everything to be simply one column. Now do keep in mind that, that in these examples, I'm really showing you a, a, a bunch of techniques. When you actually piece together things, you often will mix and match some things. All right. Um, there's one thing that I really want to remember, make a point to remember today uh, or next time, of, of how you can lock something to a certain part of the screen even if you scroll within the page. So that, that's a good one to do too. But you can mix and match a lot of these things together. Now what I want to do is I want to download what I, um, what we did last week and, and do maybe do versions of the, the template that we did last week except making them float. So last time we actually had one absolute layout and two relative layouts. The absolute layout, our template, it was rigidly defined. It doesn't matter what we do to the size of the screen, it's going to stay that width because we hard-coded the position, the top, the left, and the right. Or the top and the left, and the height and the width. The first relative one, we have like this. And this actually isn't a bad layout, except for the fact that I kind of wish this was up here. And then finally, we have our last relative, where we have it positioned like this. And as we make it narrower, it sort of keeps its size. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by using still a, basically a relative layout, but with a little bit of floating in it. All right. And I'm going to do the floating to accomplish putting this next to this. So it really looks like a, a, a header instead of this kind of, it's a lot of wasted space here. All right. 
So I'm going to go, and we'll call this one relative 3. And I'm going to go in my style sheet file. And I'm going to say, in the header section, H1s, I want to float to the left. Then I want to do the same thing for H2s. And it sort of did that, but not exactly, because it didn't do anything with the image. I forgot to do the image as well. All right. So there is kind of more of what we wanted. All right. Still not perfect, right? We could, I probably would want a little bit of space between the H3 and the, H, uh, the H3 in the image and the H1 in the image. And I probably would want less of a gap between the H1 and the H2. But we could fiddle with that using stuff that we know. All right. For example, we could say margin left 20 pixels. And that should push it a little over to the right. And I could also put a margin top of this guy to be zero pe pixels, or a margin bottom of this guy, zero pixels. and a margin top of this guy, also zero pixels, and see what that does for me. Yeah, the negative 300 on, on the top, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back, uh, we'll come back and, and, and revisit that. Uh, let me get the um, heading the way I want it to first. All right, so that crams everything together, and I could then play with um, the margin to get it spaced the way I want it to be. Uh, notice how this is still kind of a little goofy. What I can do is on the section and nav, I'll adjust that two eighty. And I'll give on this margin top. Actually, I'm going to use clear both on the margin, and that simply tells the browser to stop with the floating. So the problem that I'm running to here is if I look at this, All right, 
the way it was before this was up here. I really want to just quit the floating and I'll, therefore I say uh, clear both. I'm clearing the floating. Yeah, that's what clear both means, to, to stop floating. So I want to stop floating, because if I take this out, notice so that's up a little higher than I would like it to be, because it, it knows these elements are floating, and that messes up the positioning uh, of that. So if I say clear both, that says, okay, get rid of, you know, we're done with the floating, we can start positioning things like normal, and then we get it like that. Yes. Actually, it is clear floating to the left and clear, clo clear floating to the top. Okay. So you could, you could actually do a similar thing floating to the top. I find that really confusing. I've most always seen floating to the left. So it's floating horizontally, floating vertically. You can control that. All right. The question was asked earlier what the top negative um, means. That's associated with position relative. All right, the negative top. Let's get rid of this style rule for a second. Let's see what it looks like. All right, if I don't have any style rule in there, it's simply going to put that down there. That's the position where it belongs. Well, I don't want it to be there. I want it to be over so many from the left and up so many. All right. I can't hard code that top and left because this is has a little bit of movement to it. All right, because we have that we have our page centered, and as such, as I resize it, that margin gets bigger and smaller. So I couldn't hard code in a top and a in a left position. All right. What? what about how we centered that? Let, let's come back to that. All right. So. What I've done is I've said the position is relative. Position relative tells the browser, hey, where you were going to put this thing, put it, let's reposition it somewhere else, but in relation to where we were going to put it. So where do we want to put this? We want to put it, oh, about from the left, we want to go over 350 pixels. From the top, we want to go up 280 pixels. So that top has a negative amount because we're going up. If we were going down, it would have a positive amount. So what we're saying is shove this to the right 300 pixels or whatever I said, 350 pixels, and shove it up 280 pixels. And the effect of that then is... to pop it up there. All right. Okay, good. Yeah, the question was, is how did we center it? And we center it with a margin auto. Okay. So, here we use floating to put this alongside of there. All right. But we can actually do more, and we can get rid of that goofy, um, what do I want to say, that goofy um, negative margin. Because negative margins, I don't like. That seems goofy. I mean, it works and, and all that, but I mean, that, that sounds like, you know, you're, you're, you're I don't know, manip you know, it sounds goofy. Yeah, it, it, just, it just bugs me. All right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change everything in here to float. All right, so the section
I'm going to float to the left. The nav I'm going to float to the left. And the footer, I'm going to give a width of 100%. And they move the percentage key on me. Float left. Oops. All right. Hmm. Something's rotten in Denmark, as they say. All right. Now, I can do a couple of things. First of all, the container no longer has a height because I'm floating these things, and that confuses a container of the height. So what I can do is I can say clear both on this guy, and that will get rid of the floating, and that will sort of anchor everything down at the bottom. All right, so that took care of that. All right. The section, I'm going to tell it to finish floating from above and start a new float. And then everything's the way that it ought to be. This, if we look at it, is a much more straightforward CSS because it doesn't involve those goofy negative margins. What if the navigation, for example, changed? that would affect those negative margins if we added something to the navigation or if we added something to the section or whatever. Whereas with this, since we don't have any hard-coded numbers in, if we change the content, it won't really have a negative impact on this. Now this is still a relative or flexible layout because if you notice, this wiggles, but it doesn't move around too much. In other words, we've defined this as a constant width, so as I make this bigger and smaller, everything stays relative to everything else, but the margins get bigger and smaller as I go across. What I want to do now is I want to take this and do a true floating layout for it. All right? So I'm going to copy this folder one last time for today. Get rid of the style. So, I can make the header have, and we'll do a few different things with this. I'll do a header with a width of 100%. We'll do a section, we'll give it a width of 100%. Let's 
say sixty percent, and then I will give it a minimum width of three hundred pixels. The nav, I will give a width of 30%, float left. And the footer, I will give a width of 100%, float left. Let's see what we got. I'm doing all this just off the top of my head, so I don't expect it to be perfect. I got rid of the container. All right. So let me go in and let me put on each of these elements. Or I could do this. of the way I want it to be, but we still have some of those issues from before. All right. Let's give um, a header, or let's give this, um, this a width of 're both in essence gets rid of the effects of any previous floating you've done so there we have that and notice how as a page gets so small stuff sort of pops into place underneath it which probably isn't a bad look in, in, in the case of a mobile device questions about this. One more thing that I do want to show is I want to show how we can keep things fixed in a certain position. All right. So let's go
Notice as I scroll this, the navigation moves. Everything moves. But if I go in here into the style for this, I could specify for the navigation position fixed left 350 top, let's do 200. Notice now as I scroll, the navigation stays fixed as opposed to scrolling with it. Now this, isn't, uh, this is still not 100% good because this does a little bit of floating. Um, but again, we can anchor the navigation down. If this got smaller, yeah, it would go off the side of the page. But normally, this is sort of a bad example, but... Um, it got the idea across is when you define the position as fixed, then it stays in position even when you scroll. That's different than absolute, which sort of scrolls with the page. Um, this would work better if I put like the navigation like over here, if I did this. Let me go and change this real quick. sort of what I mean. So as we scroll it, that navigation stays fixed there. And you could do a similar thing on the top or, or on the bottom. All right, let's see. So this is another option that you have where we keep that fixed in position and um, everything else moves around. Actually, that this pretty much became locked in place once I did that because I got rid of some of the relative um, sizes of things. It should be clear that with a single HTML file, we can position things in wildly different ways. Um, one thing that I want to talk about next time is a nice website that sort of drives this point home. You know, we've done some, we've whipped together some quick examples and we've shown pretty well how we can vary the appearance of the site without changing the content. Well, there's a site out on the web that really makes that point dramatically. All right. So what I want to do next time is I want to show that site and discuss it in more detail, and then sort of give a start to what we can do with uh, on a mobile website. What can we do via CSS to make a mobile website work? So that's what we'll pick up uh, next time. All right, see you up in lab.